Good day, grade 11s. We have learned about ohmic and non-ohmic resistors. In this lesson, we are going to look at how we can use Ohm's law to solve problems for series and parallel circuits. Let's start with the series circuit. Here, we have a closed circuit with a cell and ammeter and two resistors, R1 and R2 in series. There are three voltmeters that have been placed across the cell and across each resistor. We also see that the ammeter has a reading of 3 amperes, resistor 1 has a value of 3 ohms, while resistor 2 has a value of 6 ohms. It is always good to analyze what we are given before we attempt the question. Now we need to determine the readings on the voltmeters in the circuit. We know that R equals V divided by I. To calculate V, we need both the current and the resistance. Since this is a series circuit, the current is the same throughout the circuit. So the current in the circuit is 3 amperes. We know that the resistance of the first resistor is 3 ohms. The current is 3 amperes. Therefore, using Ohm's law, R equals V divided by I. We rearrange the equation to make V the subject of the formula. Substitute the values for I and R and calculate that the voltage across the resistor 1 is 9 volts. Now, try to work out what the reading of V2 is. That is the voltage across resistor 2. Again, since current is the same in a series circuit, we know that I equals 3 amperes. The resistance for resistor 2 is 6 ohms. When we rearrange the Ohm's law equation and substitute the values that we have, we see that the potential difference across the second resistor is 18 volts. Now we need to calculate V3. V3 represents the total potential difference of the circuit. To calculate the total potential difference, we must calculate the total resistance. Let us consider the two resistors together. We need to reduce two resistors to one. We know that when resistors are in series, we can find their total resistance by adding them. Therefore, R total equals R1 plus R2. So, in this case, the total resistance, RT, is equal to 3 ohms plus 6 ohms, which gives a total of 9 ohms. We know that the current is the same throughout the circuit. Therefore, I equals 3 amperes. Now, applying Ohm's law, V equals I times R. And substituting in the values for I total and R total, we calculate the total potential difference to be 27 volts. V3 gives the total potential difference of the circuit. Now that we have learned how to apply Ohm's law to solving problems in a series circuit, let's look at a parallel circuit. Here we have a parallel circuit. When we follow the circuit from the positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal, we see that there is a resistor in series with a voltmeter across it. Then there is an ammeter. After this, the circuit splits with two resistors in parallel with the voltmeter across them. There is an ammeter in one branch of the parallel circuit. And finally, the circuit is completed as we return to the cell. We are given this information, V1 reads 8 volts, a1 reads 4 amperes, and A2 reads 1,33 amperes. Note that we have been given some extra information that wasn't written on the circuit diagram. Fill that in on the diagram so that we don't forget that we can use it. Now let's look at the questions. Determine R1, V2, R3, and the potential difference across the ends of the battery. First we find the resistance of resistor 1. The potential difference across this resistor is 8 volts. So we can write V equals 8 volts. The current through this resistor is 4 amperes. So now we can use Ohm's law to calculate the resistance. We see that the resistance equals 8 divided by 4, giving us a resistance of 2 ohms. In the next question, we need to determine voltage V2 we can see that V2 is across both the 4 ohm resistor as well as across R3. Since we have more information about the 6 ohm resistor, we will use this to calculate V2. 
we can immediately write down the resistance, which equals 6 ohms. We were also told in the information that A2 equals 1,33 amperes. Again, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the voltage V2. The voltage equals 6 times 1,33, which gives us a voltage reading of 8 volts. Now let's go back to our questions to see what else we need to calculate. Next, we have to calculate R3. We see that R3 is in parallel with the 6 ohm resistor as well as with V2. We know that current in a parallel circuit splits. So if we have a total of 4 amperes that splits and the one branch has 1,33 amps, the remainder of the current must be going through the other branch. We can therefore calculate the current traveling through the other branch by subtraction. 4 minus 1,33 equals 2,67 amps. Therefore, we know that there are 2,67 amperes traveling through the R3 branch. We know from our previous calculation that V2 equals 8 volts. I equals 2,67 amps. V equals 8 volts. Again, we use Ohm's law to calculate the resistance in R3. When we substitute in, we see that 8 divided by 2,67 equals 3 ohms. Now let's look at the final question. We need to determine the potential difference across the ends of the battery. Remember that the potential difference across the ends of the battery is equal to the total volts used in the circuit. Let's look at the circuit again. Do you see that we can think of the circuit in two parts, a series part and a parallel part? We use the total of 8 volts to get through the series part of the circuit. We use another 8 volts to get through the parallel part of the circuit. Therefore, it is easy to calculate the total volts required by the circuit. V total equals the 8 volts from the series part plus the 8 volts from the parallel part to give us a total reading of 16 volts. So, today we have learned how to use Ohm's law to solve problems with both series and parallel resistors. Grade 11s, you will need to practice solving problems like these. You will find more questions in the task video. Have a nice day.